Patrick Rue here. Today I wanted to talk about a Jackson Model 648R vacuum tube tester. And they made quite a lot of these testers throughout the range of the 648 series, all with different designations. But the circuitry is basically the same. They just changed, made some enhancements, changed tube sockets around, um, changed the front panel configuration, and a few other things. When I received this tester, it wasn't functional. The line voltage indicator worked properly on the meter, but it wouldn't test. And when I opened it up and looked around inside, someone had attempted some repairs. They had replaced some of the resistors already, which I went ahead and replaced the rest of them. And there was a wiring change. I don't know what they were thinking, but uh, I repaired that. And also it had a bad plate potentiometer, the plate current here. And I found some suitable replacements and installed that. I have one more resistor to put in as you'll see but all in all it's a pretty neat little tester and it works pretty darn good. So let's get to the back end of it and have a look at what I did. So I have it out of its case because I still need to put one more resistor in there when I replace it. I noticed a couple that I checked they were the ones that I did replace were out of value, but it's a pretty neat little tube tester. The uh, Jack Jackson had their own scheme. They called it uh, dynam dynamic tube tester, but it's actually an emission tester. But what they did, a lot of the emission testers tie all the tube elements together. But these 648 series testers actually simulated a tube environment by putting the proper voltages and currents on each tube element while it's being tested and pretty easy to set up there's a there's a roll chart and that's a part of the box I didn't take it out but you just set your circuit D you set your circuit E and Set your plate current, what the plates should be, your filament voltage, and also, of course, your line control. You need to set it for the voltage that you have, and whatever buttons in the, uh, they tell you that you need to test for the different uh, elements in the tube, you have to like if it's a, it says WX, you have to press WX at one time. And if you need to release buttons, you can use a quick release on all of them. So it works pretty good. And uh, notice this needle's way over here. That's because it's setting at an angle. And also, when you are setting... One more thing I didn't mention before in the... When you're setting the the uh, calibration on this, I would advise putting something under each edge to raise it up so that this is level. Because if, it, if it's not level, then you adjust your needle. It's not going to, and then if it moves, you know, it, it will not be right when you do make your adjustments for your calibration. But uh, the nice manual to have, there are manuals available, but this one here from Vacuum Tubes Inc. is a nice one. It covers all the whole 648 series and had uh, some tidbits of information that I couldn't find anywhere else on the net and the information that's out there. But let's have a look at the backside and talk about that. So when I received this and opened it up to take a look inside it was obvious that someone had tried to do some repairs and gave up. 
So as I went through, I noticed they had already replaced some of the resistors. And actually, this one, they had the wrong value in, so I'll replace that with the right value. And I have uh, since started to replace some of these others, especially the the one percent tolerance. I have one more here to replace that hasn't hasn't haven't received it yet. Then I'll solder this in. But these are one percent resistors, and I have a as you can see I have them labeled. So if you need that for reference to use, that's fine. And I also replaced the ones in the other side of the board here. There was one down here that someone had already replaced, but I replaced these. There was another 1%. Now these two power resistors, one here and one here, were only to be 5% according to the schematic, but I put 1% in there anyway, and someone had already replaced this one too. Um, the, uh, also, on the leakage control, it, it's kind of hard, hard to following the schematic because they ran the wires a little different. And I think that's where whoever tried to repair this got a little confused because over here on the leakage control, they had an extra wire and the way they had it wired, the resistor was soldered on the wrong post and then they had an extra wire which would, would in fact be jumping this control out. So I'm not sure what they were trying to figure out. They just didn't quite understand. But when I received this, the problem was the plate control. The plate current control was open. And I'm not sure what someone tried to do. It looks like they opened it. And I don't know what. looks like they were pounding on it. I'm not sure why. Because I did pop this open and it pops right back down. It, uh, there, there's an open in the, in the uh, winding inside here. And actually I made a solder bridge just to test this. And it all worked, but the res the res blah. <laughs> Let me spit that one out. The resistance was a little bit too low to be able to calibrate properly. And of course, in the in the calibration, they uh, want you to adjust the line voltage first by using a. Uh, if you have an auto transformer, set it at 100 volts. Then you need to set R15 where your meter is exact center reading. And you pick the line voltage, you pick the 100 volt uh, setting on there and set it. And there's two ways to uh, calibrate this, a couple different ways. Now, I think the factory way is a little safer because you got to reach inside to adjust this R5. I have a, uh, they suggest a power supply anywhere from 0 to 60 volts. I had mine set around 12 volts and adjust the current. I have an adjustable current power supply at 25 milliamps and then you adjust R5 till you get a center reading on the meter. This was the R5, it's the 40 ohm. And that worked out okay with the replacement potentiometer that I found. Actually, I, I bought a bunch of them. I had to get a price. And these are the original call for 380 ohm. Actually, I put an auction up on eBay just to get rid of the other ones. I bought had to buy six of them. I uh, kept one and I'll get rid of four and put one inside. But these are Mallory M400s. Uh, and uh, of course with a uh, number four taper. Number four taper meant back then that it was just a linear taper. But the 400 ohm worked fine. 
and it was able to calibrate fine. But I still can't figure out what they did with this control and why why they were why it was being banged on. Um, maybe they thought it started working again. I don't know. But I cleaned everything out with uh, deoxit, cleaned all the uh, controls out, and it it seems to work fine. I just uh, have to get this other resistor as soon as it comes. I have it ordered. Uh, resistor R, and that will, uh, then I'll solder this one in, solder everything in, and I'll recalibrate everything, and it should be good to go. But it seems to be a nice little tester, and I think it will work fine. And uh, there's another way you can also calibrate this. If you go over, I'll leave the link over to TubeSound. He has a good article on repairing the 648 series and how you can calibrate it a different way, but you have to be careful because it's going to have power on it to do this. And, of course, you're reaching inside underneath when this is setting flipped over. So that's not a safe thing to do. You can get bit or get hurt pretty bad. So you'd have to be careful to do that. But it works too. I'll leave the link to that. He has a nice article. Also, the previous uh, versions of the 648s used a vacuum tube. This one uses a diode. And he also has instruction on there how to remove that diode or that vacuum tube and put a diode in. And I noticed how this one's wired. I don't know if someone has changed it, but this is the original diagram that was in the bottom of the box, the uh, wooden case that it came in, and it's marked 648R. But you can see how the diode is wired there on the schematic, but it's actually not that way. They changed it at some point, I don't know why, and mine is wired like the uh, newer style units. Uh, the schematic that was in Jim Cross's uh, manual from Vacuum Tubes Inc. for this model, the 648R, shows it the other way, so whether I was trying to see if someone had changed that. They may have changed it or at the factory, you know, they, they stuck schematics in and when they did it, they'd already might have made that change and wired this little diode in a little different. But, uh, so, other than that, uh, if you have any questions, anything I can help with, that'll work fine. Um, also on this one, you notice the potentiometer is underneath this transformer, so you have to be careful. I had to unscrew the transformer and, and kind of tilt it to pull out the potentiometer, the plate potentiometer. So, and and that and it works fine. So if you have any questions, um, I'll leave some links to some of these pictures where the resistor locations are and uh, I'll put them up in Dropbox so that you can view them. Oh, and you hear my helper down here. Come here, helper. This is my helper. He's always around when I'm doing stuff. He wants to see what I'm doing. He gets his nose and everything. So, uh, what are you doing, bud? So if you have any questions, give a yell, and have a good day.